Sharing data. A tour of C++, concurrency and utilities. Sometimes tasks need to share data. In that case, the access has to be synchronized so that at most one task at a time has access. Experienced programmers will recognize this as a simplification, example, there is no problem with many tasks simultaneously reading immutable data. But consider how to ensure that at most one task at a time has access to a given set of objects. The fundamental element of the solution is a mutex, a mutual exclusion object, a thread acquires a mutex using a lock operation. Mutex M, controlling mutex. Int sh, shared data. Void f. Unique lock mutex lck, m, acquire mutex. sh plus equals 7, manipulate shared data. Release mutex implicitly. The unique locks constructor acquires the mutex through a call m.lock. If another thread has already acquired the mutex, the thread waits, blocks, until the other thread completes its access. Once a thread has completed its access to the shared data, the unique lock releases the mutex with a call m.unlock. The mutual exclusion and locking facilities are found in mutex. The correspondence between the shared data and a mutex is conventional. The programmer simply has to know which mutex is supposed to correspond to which data. Obviously, this is error-prone, and equally obviously we try to make the correspondence clear through various language means. For example, class record public mutex rm It doesn't take a genius to guess that for a record called rec, recrm is a mutex that you are supposed to acquire before accessing the other data of rec. Though a comment or a better name might have helped a reader. It is not uncommon to need to simultaneously access several resources to perform some action. This can lead to deadlock. For example, if thread 1 acquires mutex 1 and then tries to acquire mutex 2 while thread 2 acquires mutex 2 and then tries to acquire mutex 1, then neither task will ever proceed further. The standard library offers help in the form of an operation for acquiring several locks simultaneously. Void F Unique lock mutex LCK1, M1, defer lock, defer lock, don't yet try to acquire the mutex. Unique lock mutex LCK2, M2, defer lock. Unique lock mutex LCK3, M3, defer lock. Lock, LCK1, LCK2, LCK3, acquire all three locks. Manipulate shared data. Implicitly release all mutexes. This lock will only proceed after acquiring all its mutex arguments and will never block, go to sleep, while holding a mutex. The destructors for the individual unique locks ensure that the mutexes are released when a thread leaves the scope. Communicating through shared data is pretty low level. In particular, the programmer has to devise ways of knowing what work has and has not been done by various tasks. In that regard, use of shared data is inferior to the notion of call and return. On the other hand, some people are convinced that sharing must be more efficient than copying arguments and returns. That can indeed be so when large amounts of data are involved, but locking and unlocking are relatively expensive operations. On the other hand, modern machines are very good at copying data, especially compact data, such as vector elements. So don't choose shared data for communication because of efficiency without thought and preferably not without measurement. Thank you for watching.